Good morning. Viewpoint, the program of personalities, politicians, and perspectives. We'll leave the politics out today, this fair and unbalanced program that we always are when we start talking about politics. Um, but do I to have delighted to have my sidekick's uh, daughter. Uh, Judy's getting a couple of much-needed days of rest and relaxation. Uh, Cynthia Lynn Bounds is with us this morning. Good morning, Mrs. Bounds. Good Listen. morning, and very glad to be here with well, you, Well, we're Bill. tickled to have you, my dear. Uh, you will recall that we always usually try to start out with kudos on Viewpoint. Yes. Uh, if I may be permitted a, a, a personal one to start with. But first, you kind of have to set the, the, the setting for this. Uh, you know, uh, we went through the summer without touching a lawnmower. Yes. And I almost forgot how. And, uh, and, and you know, when I decide to do something, I get her done. And when I get behind that mower, it's an Armstrong mower, you know, and uh, I move out, walk along fast and get the job done. Well, the other day, the old folks were not doing quite as well as they ought to be. So I was walking much slower, kind of poking along, pushing that mower along. And Shirley Richhart goes by and thinks there's something wrong with me, God love her, and stopped to ask if she could finish the job for me. Now, what did I say? <laughs> and that be lies, that be lies Harold Trapp's old axiom, people are, people are no damn good. Well, that's not so, and <laughs> Shirley proved that. I was. I, I missed it because I thought it was a very, very nice gesture, and I, I sincerely appreciated it. This is the joy of living in a small community. Well, really. You know so many people, and they're there to step up to the plate and help. Well, I really wasn't on top of my game as it was. That's why I was walking so slowly. But I was getting the job done, and I figured I had to lark to get it done, and so what the heck. Um, yeah, no, uh, a really big uh, kudo to our hometown boy, Derek Shonar, who stepped to the plate yes. in a, what could have been a very, very ugly situation up there in Normal. So hats off to Derek, by golly. Uh, it's nice to uh, say you knew that young fellow. Yes, yeah. um, that, that was Great families, both. Yeah, I was in school with their granddaddy, by golly. That tells I you wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um, your mother once in a while gives us a few goodies that has been gleaned. Uh, you found uh, some more that uh, was in her, her file. I, I did. This, this was forwarded on an email from Lois. And it says, a truly happy person is one who can enjoy the scenery on a detour and one who can enjoy browsing old cemeteries, some fascinating things on tombstones. In Redesso, New Mexico Cemetery, here lies Johnny Yeast. Pardon for him not rising. <laughs> <laughs> and another one from, let me turn the page, in a cemetery in England. Remember, man, as you walk by, as you are now, so once was I. As I am now, so shall you be. Remember this and follow me. To which someone replied by writing on the tombstone, to follow you I'll not consent until I know which way you went. <laughs> There's something he said to that, certainly. Incidentally, Lois is uh, Lois Harvey, our, our roving reporter from across Wisconsin. And uh, periodically we receive some greetings from her. We're always happy to have that. And we uh, issue her a, a good day. Uh, she'll be seeing this sometime during the course of the day on YouTube. Uh, by the way, folks, uh, if you want to uh, have another go at this renowned program, uh, you can tune in to WLCNonline.com, and that will be running here sometime this afternoon and then in perpetuity, I presume. Let's get to the serious business Why we're here this morning. Uh, we have with us a couple of guests, and I'm going to ask uh, Cynthia to introduce them, and we're going to talk about uh, tourism and the importance of uh, this rail splitting festival we have coming up. So go right ahead. Well, we do. We have the Rail Splitting Festival starting on Friday, and I would like to introduce Darlene Bagolka, who is the president of the Logan County Rail Splitters Association, and John Sutton, who is the chairman of the Rail Splitting Association for Logan County. He's the guy that makes wings work. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Glad to have both of you this morning. Uh, Dar, tell us a little about uh, the sphere of your responsibilities. That's a big, uh, big job you have here. So. Uh, Let's talk about your job and, and uh, what the, all the planning that's going on for this. Then we're going to skip over to John for a minute. That's right. President, you just kind of delegate and make sure that the chairmans are doing their thing. Mm -hmm. And 
John is the festival chairman, I don't have to worry. He takes care and gets it done. Yeah, yeah. And he's out there all week making sure that everything gets set up so that come Saturday morning when the festival opens at 10, mm -hmm. we're ready to go. But we do have a little kickoff event on Friday evening, which is the Civil War Ball. And that takes place at the Park District from 7 to 10. A lot of the people will come out in their elaborate period costumes. But if you don't have one of those, come out anyway, because we don't care. And they will work with you to learn the dances. So, And it's a family event. The whole weekend is family oriented. Mm -hmm. Which is a nice, neat thing. Now, the ball, uh, a lot of people come in period costumes, as you say. Uh, how do they acquire these costumes? Uh, the, uh, a lot are remade or made out of uh, or copies of the costumes of the day. Uh, There's actual groups that do a lot of these um, Civil War balls. And we'll have a group come from Springfield. Um, usually there's one from the Peoria, Metamora mm -hmm. area. And they do these on a regular basis, where we just do ours once a year. They do theirs on a monthly to six weeks. So they have the period costumes. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not only the ladies. The gentlemen will come out in their, their fine attire as well. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the fun is, if you, even, if you don't want to dance, just come out and look at the elegant costumes that were around at that time. Well, and I think we can be glad that the weather is going to be cooler. I can't imagine, I'm sure it was a lot of wool, a lot of layering, and it would be a little toasty. Yes, and that's part of the reason that we do it at the Park District. Um, we can kind of control the elements there. If it gets too warm, we can turn that AC down a little bit more. Although they didn't have it back in those times, sometimes we do have to kind of adjust and you know, kind of realize that yes, we do live in the time period that we do and not back in those days when they didn't have the air conditioning and had to wear those kind of outfits all the time. Well, and it's so many things have changed. I mean, you didn't shower daily. You <laughs> didn't exactly. get to wash your clothes <laughs> the point I was regularly. Make, they didn't have bathtubs as That's, we know them. Yeah, yeah, you uh, know, a lot, alone lot of nice perfumes to cover it up. Mm -hmm. It's it's very different, and I think if if you haven't ever had an opportunity to try to live without the amenities that we have today. It's different. It's difficult. It is. And that's why we encourage the families, especially on Saturday once the festival opens, is to come out. Um, many, many years back, yes, we had the touch of the 1860s era. And we were big on the crafts of the time. Now we have kind of turned this table and we're more into the 1860s with this just a smattering of the crafts that are you know going on nowadays. Um, we want the kids, we want the families, we want them to come out and step back into time. We have a whole village that we invite them to talk with the people that are there and see how it was when Abraham Lincoln was around. Um, as village. you said, mm -hmm. you know, things were a lot different back in those days and this gives them a chance to kind of have hands on. You know, leave that cell phone in your purse or in your pocket. Leave that iPad somewhere else, you know. Experience life when we didn't have all of these electronic gadgets. Well, and I think it helps, you know, we've got, our kids go to school and they study history, but the pages of history in a classroom pales in comparison to being able to go and watching them dip candles, watching them cook in the big, you know, copper pots. A couple years ago, I was at one of the local eateries after the gates had closed for rail splitter that day. And there was a family sitting there. And I just happened to strike up a conversation and said, by the way, did you go out to rail splitter festival today? Yes, we did. And we couldn't get our kids away from there. They were having so much fun. Mm -hmm. And there was a gentleman out there at that time that was making the old time hammers. And the kids got to make those and they had them with them. Well. And you know, that really made me feel good, you know, as being one of the organizers of the festival that yes, these kids really enjoyed that. And that's what we want as the organizers of the festival. We want the families to come out and enjoy it. Well, and the kids will remember that. Mm -hmm. John, um, chairman, that's a tough job. Uh, that didn't just start a couple of months ago. When did you start? planning on this uh. before last festival was over we had a two-page list of what we were going to change and do for this year checklist so it's 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 a 
year-round thing. It, it, it looks like it's a two or three day festival, but it takes us a year to put on it. For instance, it, it takes us a week just to set up the grounds. Yes, so as a, you mentioned this recreation of the village. That just didn't happen. That's not out there now. It has to be set up. Well, it's now it's been set up, certainly. But uh, uh, there's a, just a lot of physical things that need to be done uh, over and above and beyond all of the planning. Uh, what, would, what would be the, the biggest job that you would consider the toughest job in your job as, a, as chairman of this? I think it's probably trying to spot everything whether it's the crafts in the buildings, the historical mm -hmm. displays, whether it's the demonstrators that we have in the village, mm -hmm. whether it's um, making sure that the uh, splitting and crossbuck sawing and firewood and all that happens and all the materials are there when it's time to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, you mentioned, and uh, um, Judith since mentioned uh, uh, history classes and so forth, it occurs to me... Uh, you lived it, right? <laughs> yes, I... Yeah, I certainly do. You betcha. You betcha. Uh, you're quite correct about that. Uh, but it occurs to me that this almost should be a required assignment for kids in school to go out there and and see uh, what how it was, in quote, the old days, and really the old days. Uh, they'd get a, a different perspective on things. Yes. Um, as a matter of fact, last year, uh, this year because of scheduling, we couldn't do it. But we, we had the 10th Cavalry up, and oh. some of the school kids came over, and they separated them into six different groups. And while this one was cooking, that yeah. one was marching, this one was something else. Yeah. Oh, how neat. But uh, then when they went back, then they had to write up which then gets into the literature and the and the writing skills, English. Mm -hmm. But they had to write up what they learned and turn that in for extra credit. That's good So, it, you know, from a teacher's standpoint, it's kind of a stacked deck because you're going to give extra credit, but mm -hmm. you, you gear it uh, the way that you want it. Yeah. But um, it was a great learning experience, and, and the, the Civil War people loved it. But we also have the same thing, even though the... Uh, 10th Cavalry isn't here this year, mm -hmm. they can come out and they can learn stone soup. Uh, they can learn, uh, we have a, a, a treen maker, which is making forks and spoons and things, but out of wood. Think of that. Because yeah. metal wasn't that no. readily available to be used that way. If you were re really upper crust, yeah, you could afford it. But everybody else had wooden spoons. We have a guy that's coming that's going to do that. Um, his, his wife will be spinning and, and dyeing uh, wool rather than running to the fabric store and getting it pre-printed. But uh, those kind of things are, are, are happening daily out there at the, at the festival. And stone soup doesn't mean opening up a can with a can opener and pouring it into the bowl and sticking it into the microwave it means yes yeah uh, you you bring your produce in and it's hard to tell what will be in there it's whatever people bring yeah. there will be carrots there will be potatoes onions things like that but those all come from from uh, local gardens home raised uh, m most of the meat is um, most of it will be wild game whether it's um, deer or uh, moose mm -hmm. um, beaver whatever what, you know, right. what, yeah. what, whatever it, you know there'll be a, mm -hmm. enough meat in there for for protein you and know I recall the uh, talking about food and the preservatives and so forth yeah is she young but I remember the uh, <laughs> we had a cave on the farm out there at Burton View. Right. And uh, that was a preservative. Yeah. Yeah, uh, your, your root cellars. The root cellars, yeah. 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 The root cellar, exactly. Then, we, of course, we had Steve Bourbon go out and, and deliver ice for the Central Illinois yeah. Ice Company. And they'd have a, a sign in the window. They want 25 pounds. They want 50 pounds or whatever. Yeah. Those were the way they called them ice boxes, you know. That was the ice box, yeah. and the ice man cometh. Yes, yeah, exactly right. I remember the stories from, from my great-grandparents. Yeah. Yeah. And talking and about the Kenneth, I'd like to talk to you about that. Yeah. Um, we mentioned the cavalry, um, which is a side issue. 
they uh, they still have the retirement of the uh, of the colors down there at the Abraham Lincoln uh, um, I Monument. I think they still do. I, I went was, down there a couple of years yeah. ago. That's a really neat. Uh, that's a neat thing to to yeah. be a part of. Yeah. Uh, that's the, they're all dressed up in those old un uniforms and they retire the colors, and it's a really neat. Thing. Mm -hmm. Notice by uh, that John said cavalry. How that's many times cavalry. we ever hear it said cavalry? Yeah. All the cavalry. time. Well, <laughs> well, different place. Yeah, that's that's slightly a different. different, different. Yeah. Um, one thing that I think people may or may not know is. These aren't people from just Central Illinois. This is the National Rail Splitting Festival. So yeah, we'll have them from several states come in, and we know that they're coming in because we've already talked to them. Uh -huh. But uh, this this will be the national split, and there's a group that started more or less up and down the Mississippi, and and they're on a point system, which is not our our festival, but it's it's the uh -huh. same people. Uh -huh. But they have a point system. And it culminates on this this split out here, and they will name their champion off mm -hmm. of our points mm -hmm. on our split. Now, speaking of championships, uh, what were the various uh, uh, activities include that would, would create champions? Um, yeah. Well, the, of course, the, the the big thing will be the um, uh, the the rail split, but. Um, We've got uh, firewood split for men or, or women's firewood, uh, <coughs> log rolling, cross cut saw, the, the old fashioned tug of war, and you can have as many people. I have a hundred foot hay rope, uh -huh. so you can put fifty people on the side. Now, mind That's, you, this was the entertainment of that day. Yes, That's right. You see, we stay in and watch the boob tube, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> or sit at the computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but we. Uh, we have the amateurs and the pros. The amateurs will be on Saturday. The pros will be on Sunday. And people wonder about that pro split. This year, our logs are a little bit bigger, a little thicker than usual. We won't be setting any records this year. Uh -huh. But it has been where somebody, the first place guy, would in four minutes would win $1,000. Well, and, and you just pick lots to get your log yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you, so you can't go and say really i really want this yeah, one it's, no uh, they, they 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 throw numbers in a hat you pull out a number and you find that log with that number uh, and good or bad you got it now, you hope which, it's not really gnarled yeah, as they say which, the outside can look which, wonderful which uh, happens, inside yeah. might be something whence cometh the logs and where do we get these logs well they had been coming from over in the quincy area but uh that stand of timber uh, ran out of, oh, of good yeah, stuff so this this came from southern Illinois uh, down around the Carbondale area uh-huh and um, well there again that's that's just well it's not a little thing well, at all just a procurement of the supplies you need yes mm -hmm. Be, because we had to find out that the man couldn't pro provide them come up with another supplier then we had to get trucking and bring them up mm -hmm. because 35 logs is a lot of weight and we got weight restrictions and how long are the logs for splitting <clears throat> they're they're 10 foot right now they're 10 foot six but but we will cut ends off so that everybody has exactly 10 foot okay out, thing, out of the, the 10 we'll and the pro yeah. pro split we'll get eight rails and in the amateur split we get six now most of those will get re-split, especially looking at this year's logs, because they're so big. Mm -hmm. We can, we can, we we can get more rails out of out of that because they'll be so big and heavy, you won't hardly be able to move them. What do you do with the rails after the rail splitter? Uh, for instance, Lincoln College. You look at the front of it. You look at the courthouse. Um, Postville. Yeah, po Postville. Postville um, some of the houses, White's some of the auction. in town, they have them. Um, now, are those really available commercially if somebody wanted to buy some for their yes. for their decor around their house? Yes, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, uh, Plutes out on uh, behind Chester East Lincoln mm -hmm. just re replaced his that had uh, worn out after well, 20 years or so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, they're they're available. Uh, it, they're they're a dollar a foot. So a a, a, a 10 foot rail is ten dollars. Now, um, uh, Clayville has started up again over uh, the outside west of uh, Springfield, and we have sent over, 
I don't know, I would say three to four hundred rails over there. Mm -hmm. And they're redoing their grounds and they have a, a pretty good chance of getting a, a bunch of them out of this mm -hmm. uh, this weekend split mm -hmm. to finish up their stuff. So they're more or less the, the same idea that we, you know, the, the 1860s. And y for those of you who haven't been to Clayville, it is a neat place to go. It is really busy. This year, Not that they have something no. almost every weekend. I want to uh -huh. say it's on 97. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about this in a minute, but the first thing we better do is talk about a commercial or two, or we might get our mics shut off. Uh-oh. <laughs> 